Hello everyone. Welcome to this tutorial. I'll try to keep this tutorial as short as possible. In this tutorial, we'll create something like this. We will try to wrap any object using flip fluids. We'll put on a geometry node. I'll call it flip. And in Houdini 20.5 plus, I think we have this flip configure of uh, flip l something so this will put down a preset by itself so you can basically use any kind of fluid uh, your own system i'm going to remove the emitter and put down a spear and just push it up like this maybe like three meters and make it as the emitter i'm going to give some color and i will remove the ground plane so we have a flip system but it's not emitting every frame that's because the activation is only on the first frame we'll just make the value one we have a emitter I'll create a tube. Uh, sorry. I need to make this tube a bit longer and uh, rotate it. And I'm going to animate the spear from the starting to the end of the tube. and like 72 frames i will animate it to the end and the last 10 frames i am going to make the scale from 1 to 0 so that it gradually stops emitting fluid we can put the flip collider and connect it to the tube now we should have collision enabled to the fluid remember to turn on those end caps it's very important and yeah we have fluid system and it is colliding with the tube and it is falling down now we'll see how to wrap the fluid around it put on a proper angle and we need to import the collider whatever you have in our case it's a tube and let's put on a null and call it out collision and i'm going to import it in the second input so this is the zeroth input i don't want to disturb it and this is the first input so basically we can find out the position closest position on the tube and we can push the particles towards it okay that is how we are going to do this wrapping but to, to find out the nearest point we need some resolution in the tube but we are not going to always have like a lot of points in our collision so we are going to use the primitives in primitives we are going to have uv's uv coordinates and so we are going to use this the primitive and the uv coordinate to find the closest position v at near pose is equal to prim uv we can use this function uh, to get the position so from the first input i am going to extract the position uh, but unfortunately it needs two more inputs it needs to know the primitive and like the ur uv coordinate okay for now we'll just put it near prim so that is the closest primitive and the uv coordinate prim uv but the good thing is we can extract these two values using another function 
called xyz so basically this xyz is like to calculate the distance but uh, it it requires near prim and near uv but if you don't give any value to it uh, just if you give a name like a variable name it will create the value itself it is going to give the value itself so this is kind of a special function so f at dist is equal to x y z dist and first input v at p the position and near prim and near uv so we are not going to give any value here we are just going to directly give this variable name and it is going to give the value it is going to find out the value for these two by itself uh, okay so we need to declare this int near prim vector near uv we are not going to give any value just we are going to declare it okay now we'll check if we got these two values v at near np is equal to near prim v at i'm sorry this is integer and this is vector n u v we'll call it near u v and if you come out you can see we have the near pose the near prim and also the nuv okay so we have found the near position the closest position on the tube now what we can do is we can subtract this position with the closest point to get the like the direction and that we will use as velocity we will call it v at velo is equal to v at velo is equal to um, v at p minus uh, v at near pose so this will give a vector that is like we are going to use this as the velocity but you know if the distance is like too much this value is going to be like a lot okay for example if the collision the emitter is like coming from a long distance this value is also going to be very long so we are going to normalize it and make it one unit so it is always a good practice to normalize in these kind of situations where you use only the vector not the magnitude of the vector okay and we have the velos uh, velo now let's say if you directly assign it v at v is equal to v at velo there is going to be a problem um, we are replacing the entire velocity even if it is like very far away we are replacing the velocity with what we calculated so now if you see it's going to move okay i think i did it inverse near post minus b at b okay so that was a mistake now let's play yeah now the fluid is falling but it doesn't have the influence of gravity at all the entire force is replaced with the velocity that we gave but it's already going to work the concept is correct it's going to wrap around but this is not what we need actually you know we need this force to be applied only when it comes close by luckily we have this distance dist and we can blend between this velocity normal velocity and this velo by creating some value you know like using the distance like maybe 0 to 0 0.5 or something like that we'll call that strength f at strength is equal to 
fit the distance from 0 to 0 point uh, 1 maybe so when it's very close we'll give a value of blending value 0 and when it is like 0 0.1 meter away the the strength value will be 1 basically this is what we are going to use to blend and <coughs> now we'll assign it to velocity using a lerp so lerp is like kind of a blending the first value will give one value like a velo and second value will give another value and the third value will be used for blending in our case it will be strength okay you will see what i mean v at v we are going to blend with v at velo using strength the strength is going to be zero uh i think we need to invert it one comma zero so now what is going to happen is when the distance is zero this is going to uh, take so it will be the velo that we calculated okay when the distance is like 0 0.1 meter it is going to be zero so it's going to take the normal velocity that it is going to have like with all the gravity and everything now let's see what happens uh it is not working some places it looks like it is working i think the distance value 0 0.1 is a bit low let's try 0 0.3 Yeah, now you can see it is like more kind of like advecting towards the it is getting attached to the tube but it is not yet proper so let's go like a value like 0 0.7 yeah i think this distance is like a bit too much right so we need to give a bit higher distance and you can see when it comes nearby the velocity automatically changes and now it should wrap properly not only that till it reaches to a particular distance it is going to have all the like uh, the gravity and it is going to work properly okay so you saw here like some pieces fell down that is because it exceeds the distance so you need to take care of that so this in the animation i'm going to little bit push it towards the here and now it should be proper perfect so we have a perfect fluid wrapping i hope you like this tutorial uh, but i have some amazing courses online and i also have my patreon channel where uh, like where you can uh, download hip files but uh, the courses are like very interesting so for example this is like a Houdini pedestrian course using the crowd system we create a fully procedural crowd system that will follow all the signals okay and even the signals are procedural so this should be very interesting even if you are not a crowd artist and if you look at this this is like a drawing robot course where you can give your own uh, a sketch or like a drawing and Houdini is going to draw and even render it out fully procedurally we will see how to create the system fully procedural system I think this is a very interesting course and uh, the third one is this cloudscape and uh, asteroids so this is for beginners if you are new to Houdini so thank you